A week ago I published a blog post, just uh, kind of a project idea to make a laser cutter slash engraver. And uh, I've, I've been making some reasonable progress with this. Uh, this is based on the kind of micro slice Kickstarter project, which I think by the time this video goes up will have finished uh, and will certainly succeed it, or will have succeeded. And that's, um, that's a, like a really cool little thing. It's a small desktop unit. It can kind of cut and engrave and cut kind of very, very fine materials. Uh, but uh, it's quite good on the engraving front, and it's, it's tiny. But um, a downside of it being tiny is the, the kind of cutting area. It's uh, 50 millimeters square, which uh, it's really small. I mean, it's fine if you want to do a small little object, but it kind of gave me the idea to have a go making my own, but with a slightly larger build area. I set out with the name of an A5 size uh, kind of cutting area, but uh, and that is, may need to be reduced. Um, I've spent the week kind of uh, experimenting and playing with different options. There are a lot of kind of moving parts to this, quite literally, um, and I need to kind of have a, an idea that I can achieve all of them before I really kind of get invested in it and end up with uh, kind of a failed project at the end. Um, so I'm trying to do a video log, uh, a kind of build log, um, just at the kind of various different stages, and so I'm just going to run through some of the parts now and what I've uh, kind of uh, the decisions I've really made this week. Arguably one of the most important parts of a laser cutter is the laser itself. And uh, there are kind of two, two kind of routes to go down here, or for my case really only one practical route. But a uh, proper kind of large laser cutter will use a, um, a kind of a significant kind of a, a laser tube or it uses um, a kind of a high voltage, you know, kind of a kind of a low pressure kind of gas environment to generate uh, a laser and then use a mirror arrangement to kind of bounce that around internally. That's really impractical and not possible for something this small so you can use uh, laser diodes and these are the units from um, uh, kind of DVD drives. The same diode, I mean literally the same kind of diode that will be used in something like that and you can produce a, uh, a laser potentially good enough for something like this. The laser diode itself, um, you kind of mount into this, uh, into these kind of housings. These are quite common and are just kind of little focusing arrangements. So the, and screw the back here, the the laser diode. So that kind of uh, coppery gold colour part. That's the laser diode, and that's press fit into here. And then there's uh, on the front, you've got this adjustable kind of focusing lens, and that is enough to kind of uh, start cutting things. I did, um, I pulled a, a kind of laser diode out of a DVD drive, mounted it in one of these and hooked it up to a power supply. Um, it's not the best way of doing things because you need to be really careful about controlling the current into this thing. It can just uh, kind of run away and blow up and I did destroy two devices, but thankfully they were salvaged. Um, so if you're doing this, then a proper driver board like this that can provide a fixed stable current is what you need and these are pretty cheap. All the parts I've used today I've ended up getting from a, a company called uh, Osid Force and uh, or Odis Force sorry. Um, and that they uh, all these parts are basically on eBay or from their website and it seems to be pretty decent. Um, at the moment I've got up to around about uh, 200 potentially 300 milliwatts of uh, cutting power which is just on the edge of usefulness and so if I focus this dart, the darker materials absorb uh, light um, significantly better than lighter materials. Lighter materials just by their nature reflect the light out. And so if you shine a light on a dark material it will um, cut it quite easily. So if I get this at roughly the right focusing point, I don't know if that's how clear that's going to be, but there's quite a lot of smoke coming off that. And I can just about do the same with the white material, although it's, uh, it's certainly not as easy. If you're kind of careful with the focusing point and you give it a moment, well, just about cut. You can see that little mark at the bottom one there. And obviously, there, because it's now a darker point here, the it's much easier to. Um, to then kind of burn from there. And so all, a lot of these things, if you just need to get it started in that point, it'll kind of carry. And 
So, I I would like to find something better than this, um, but for now, uh, I know this will work. So that's the laser side of things sorted, and I'm pretty, or at least it, it it's confirmed at least, and I'm pretty pleased with. Um, I'm quite pleased with that, yeah. So I'm going to try and store something higher. I'd love up to kind of half a watt laser diode for this. Um, but for now, uh, this will be sufficient. The other part I've been looking at this week is how to drive these uh, moving parts. There's uh, kind of an X and Y axis, both of which need to move. And I need to somehow uh, kind of turn the, the rotational movement from the motor into a kind of linear motion. The uh, the kind of project I was looking at the other week, the, the the rail which moved back and forth used a timing belt running along, and that was really great. But it it's um, it seems slightly bulky for what uh, for the scale of this thing. At least that was my initial thought. So I've been looking at just using um, a kind of a threaded rod with a bolt mounted on it. This is kind of the, the poor man's way of doing things. You can get some proper. Um, Kind of proper kind of mechanisms and ideally kind of fitted shafts and nuts on here, but if this is um, this is good enough, I think, for what I'm doing, and it's also really kind of cheap and affordable. the The problem is uh, backlash on here. This nut, um, not sure how clearly it's going to be. It wobbles. It moves back and forwards a tiny amount, and obviously there's a little bit of side to side motion as well. It doesn't grip as um, it, it doesn't kind of take a perfectly smooth position. And the problem is, if you're, this nut here is the carriage that's being driven back and forwards, and the shaft then attaches to the motor and rotates. And so obviously the shaft's in a fixed position, and so if that rotates, this nut will then move up and down. And the problem arises if you change direction. There's a little bit of give here, so if you try start rotating back in the other way, there's a little bit of a dead band. And so you start rotating backwards, and yet the nut won't move backwards for I don't know, half a turn, quarter of a turn, something like that. And so that then presents um, accuracy problems. And uh, and there, kind of there are a couple of solutions to this. I mean, anti-backlash nuts seem to be the the way to go here. There are a couple of other. I'm just adding a bit of rubber or something like that to apply some pressure. But I I went down the anti-backlash nut route, and I've um, had a play and came up with a couple of designs. There are a few kind of homemade things around, but nothing seemed small or discreet or easy enough, frankly. And so I had a look at two options. The easy way of solving this is to use two nuts and apply pressure pulling them apart. Um, one nut will bind against this side of the, the teeth and the other nut will bind against that side. So it's always making contact in the right place when it decides to change direction. And so I kind of had a go and I thought, okay, let's uh, print a little bit of um, plastic. You put a nut in either side. And uh, like so, the shaft then runs through the middle and use a spring to hold them apart. And so it took a couple of attempts, but I ended up with something that worked. I imagine that's the shaft running through. You've got a little spring in there pushing it apart. And so I came up with two of these sizes. The um, the bottom one is obviously the spring is under a lot more compression. It works, but it's quite stiff to move. Um, so I tried a little bit bigger. The spring's under a little bit of compression, but it still moves uh, really, really smoothly. So this is the, the method, at least at the moment, I'm going to use to solve the, the backlash problem. Uh, because I'm using 3D printed parts, this mechanism can hopefully be moulded into um, the relevant part. And that brings me nicely onto the... Uh, the final bit, which is the actual uh, mechanism itself. This is what I've got so far. It, um, first off, I'm printing it in this uh, red plastic. This is because I've got an almost complete roll of um, red uh, available. I bought this uh, last year to print a really cool kind of geared interlocking heart, and I don't think I ever used it for anything ever since. So, a great way to kind of prototype all these parts. And to be honest, I, I I kind of like it, um, but the so, so I've been printing these parts. Um, I ordered a handful of bits at the beginning of the week, um, various kind of um, little adapters, um, this kind of uh, uh, linear bearings to run on these rails, um, some kind of regular kind of skate bearing type bits to fit in the side, the 
um, the five millimeter shaft and the five millimeter kind of geared rod. And so some of those bits have arrived, some of them haven't. So a lot of this is a little bit crude at this stage and I'm just there to kind of get ideas for motion. The other thing is I decided to go for, I've decided on five millimeter here. And this is more of a kind of a gut feeling. Four felt too thin and too small, and yet six seemed a little overkill for this size, so I went for five. Um, and it's not particularly common from what I can gather because um, there's not many uh, parts in these various sizes, but uh, there's enough for this to be feasible. And so far, I'm happy it, it's pretty strong for what I need. And so the, the original idea, um, find a piece, Yeah, the original idea was to have a kind of a carriage along here and possibly use um, laser cut materials in here and a mixture, mixture of both because I felt it um, it would be quite hard to um, span quite large gaps with 3D printed materials but in the end um, I kind of spotted a design which is used on a lot of the open source 3D printers um, I'll put it this um, mechanism here this slide mechanism here. This seems to be quite uh, common, so, I mean, the, which I mean these blocks either side with the, the rails in, so that's eliminated the need for a solid structure up here, which I've been really pleased with. And so the idea is, obviously this carriage then gets moved back and forwards. It's not stable because I'm using six millimeter linear bearings in here rather than four, and that's because I had six, uh, sorry, six rather than five. It's because the five um, haven't turned up yet, um, but it's enough to get the idea of how it'll work. So this then moves along the side and there'll be a, um, a drive shaft running through the length. As of yet I don't know if I'll need to drive it from both sides or whether one side can suffice, so whether or not I can kind of push from there and hopefully the other will go. Uh, with the right size bearings in this will be a lot smoother, so uh, I am, or should be. Um, so when I get that set up, I can then work out if I need to drive from one side or both. And so there'll be a, kind of a motor there with a shaft running along and running through this end block here. So that's that I'm fairly happy with. And so that should be the kind of the x-axis um, in place and covered. And I get a decent amount of uh, range uh, quite easily there. And so then that moves onto the kind of the Y movement here. You can see in here, this is the uh, um, anti-backlash nut arrangement and um, works quite well. So I'm going to, if I hold this shaft at the same place, you can see by rotating the shaft, this then carriage moves along really nicely. It is a lot slower than a timing belt would be, but considering the power of this laser, I think that is more than adequate. And so, in these blocks at the end, you've got linear bearings in here, which everything runs through. These shafts here are at the moment a press fit into these blocks, but I might need to have a better arrangement there. This um, five mil axis here will run through um, kind of little uh, kind of skate bearings in here. Um, five mil ones have actually turned up this morning, so I might reprint some of these bits. And so yeah, you can see there, that's with a larger six. And so that's fairly straightforward. The then somehow mounts a stepper motor onto one end here. So I think that would kind of butt up somehow. The coupling for the shafts and um, onto the threaded rods um, hopefully can be contained within this plastic piece here. So you can almost hide it away, have a big kind of opening internally for that. So that bit um, should be straightforward. And then from this side here, you've got this little block moving back and forwards on which, ooh, let's grab one of these, on which the laser can mount. This thing can then kind of move back and forwards. Um, set it to the right height uh, so it doesn't need any vertical adjustment in there. The, the only problem I've found so far um, is with the and kind of Y axis uh, kind of range. And this piece of wood is, I kind of cut this with arbitrary sizes, thinking that it'd be great if it could fit within these dimensions. And at the moment, um, 
x axis fantastic, but y, um, this is 15 me uh, so 15 centimeters, but because of the, the size of this and the placement, I get at most uh, 10 centimeters uh, kind of laser kind of cutting distance. So these either need to come further apart, increasing the width, but I think I, it'll be a combination of that and optimizations. I might not need two shafts on either side, one might do. I might be able to have the shafts in a vertical arrangement, uh, which obviously reduce the, the width of these parts. The mounting lugs here on the sides can be uh, hopefully repositioned, which will save some distance. Um, some of these blocks here I might be able to reduce the space between it and really kind of um, reduce the size and make it compact. And that will hopefully make it fit onto this board. And so, uh, and so this is basically where I am. I'm pretty confident with it all. Um, I'm going to build the electronic circuitry next week. I'm going to get that bit out of the way uh, because knowing me, by the time I reach the end, I'll get I've kind of slightly getting bored of it and not want to finish it off. So if I get the the, the, the kind of duller side of things out of the way, um, so I'm going to have a kind of an Arduino mounted onto a circuit board along with a couple of motor controllers, connectors for all the sensor inputs, and get that finished. And that'll be running the open source uh, uh, GBRL software. And so that, I can have that done. So when it, I get this finished, it'll should just work. Um, and see so yeah, how the next steps are kind of optimizing some of these parts and shapes and the sizes and to really see what is needed and what I can get away with. And uh, hopefully by next week, sometime next week, I'll have a much better idea of um, what can be done for all of this.